Hey, welcome back to Stock Talk with Eric Anthony. Happy Wednesday. Got some exciting information to share with you guys today. Going to review and guidance update from ALPP, some plant updates over in Nevada for ABML, and I have a pretty big story regarding Bitcoin for all of you 401kers out there. So let's get into it. Alpine 4 Holdings set Q1 2022 revenue guidance between 24 million and 26 million dollars. Kent Wilson, CEO, had this to say. With the company's Q1 revenue projected at roughly half of all of 2021's revenue, the company is poised to exceed $100 million in revenue for 2022. Further, we are also seeing our consolidated gross profit moving in the right direction to the mid 20% range. While the data shows supply chain constraints will be present for much of 2022, it is also apparent that once we see some semblance of ordinary return to the supply chain system, our consolidated gross profit will rise even further. Finally, I would be remiss if I didn't say how we are in truly exciting times here at Alpine 4, with various new products coming out from RCA Commercial, Value Aerospace, and Electjet, and strong demand from our EV customers at Quality Circuit Assembly. Q1 is just the beginning to touch the surface of what this company will do in 2022. Well, that's pretty exciting to hear regarding what the guidance will look like for Q1. If any of you guys have been following the company for as long as I have, you guys would know that there was a period of time where about 24, 25 million was what the revenue was like for an entire year. So to see that that's what it will be for Q1, couldn't be happier. Another exciting thing that you want to, another exciting thing that you want to pay attention to with what was said there is new products. Now remember, one of the biggest products that we will have that will go into production starting Q3 will be the GAX. And if you want more information regarding the GAX battery, you can check out one of the previous videos before where I go into much more detail regarding the AX battery in general, let alone what the capacity is like, charge time, and size. Well, anyway, let's move into some plant updates over at ABML. Okay, as you can see in these images right here, the fire sprinkler piping and skylights installed in phase one process area have now been set. The rebar has been installed and the footings poured for phase two building foundation. So those are just a few images of what's going on right now with the pilot plant out in Nevada. Check out this graph right here that goes into great detail regarding the phases and exactly where we are at with, with regard to construction of the plant. As you move from left to right, you can see what exactly has been completed in regard to the phase one production and what is coming up along the way. I apologize about her. The door's open, you can go in. And what is to come up for later on this month will be some more tilt panels, roofing, and more overhead door installations, to name a few. And if you guys want more information or you guys wanna hear more about the specifics with regard to how the pilot plant is coming along and what is actually going on inside and out, please go ahead and follow ABTC Stock on Twitter. He also has a YouTube, I'll put the links below, where he does an excellent job of going into the ins and outs of all the manufacturing and construction with regard to the pilot plant. And with those pictures right there, we should be able to see the walls up by the end of June, as long as everything goes according to plan. Well, anyway, that's just a little update on ABML. Now let's hop into one of the bigger stories that came out yesterday regarding Bitcoin and Fidelity. Fidelity Investments unveils a crypto option for 401k plans. The firm announced Tuesday that it will have a product ready in coming months to allow the 401k plan participants to direct a portion of their savings into Bitcoin. Employers that decide to offer the option will choose what percentage of employees' account can be directed into crypto up to a cap of 20%. Fidelity's announcement comes about a month after the regulatory guidance from the U.S. Labor Department threw cold water on the idea of adding access to digital currencies in 401k retirement plans. The guidance said that the digital assets are speculative and volatile and noted that employers offering crypto in their plans should exercise extreme care before they consider adding a cryptocurrency option to a 401k plan's investment menu. Well, there you have it. You will now have an opportunity to have Bitcoin as part of your 401k plan through Fidelity. So I don't know if any of you guys do have a 401k. Let me know in the comments below if this is something that you guys foresee yourself doing in the future. You know, we're really big on Bitcoin, Ethereum, and ADA. But ever since Elon has gone through with the deal over with Twitter, there's a part of me that has actually been a little bit more enticed regarding Dogecoin as 
as crazy as that sounds. I know that was a leading meme coin about a year, year and a half ago. But you know, myself personally, I've actually used Dogecoin to buy some stuff off of Tesla <laughs> with no issues. And if it can be integrated into the Tesla website, then why can't it be integrated into Twitter in some type of capacity? Now I know there's a whole lot that needs to be done and maybe I'm just overthinking it, but if Elon is that tied to Dogecoin and he already has it on the Tesla website, then there is a part of me that, that envisions it being utilized in a much larger scale if integrated into the Twitter app. And let me know in the comments below if you guys think that sounds crazy or if any of you guys out there are also Dogecoin holders. Personally, it's in our crypto portfolio, but it's not holding a lot of real estate in that portfolio. But we definitely have increased our position ever since the news and we will continue to do so on a dollar cost average method. Okay, well, let's hop into the market. As you can see here, Yesterday, it was all red. Today was actually a pretty stagnant day, so I'm not gonna go through each sector like we typically do, but I do wanna discuss big tech specifically. What I have noticed, and I'm wondering if any of you guys have started to notice this as well, but when we were in our last round of earnings, three of the biggest components of earnings that seemed to favor the share price for a specific stock were these three things. It was EPS, revenue, and guidance. It seemed to me that any company that had that had a beat with EPS and revenue and a strong guidance, then that share price did exceptionally well, either in after hours or the next day and the, con and the future moving forward. What we might also want to pay attention to is buybacks. To piggyback off of that, let's just look at Chipotle. Chipotle reported yesterday they had a beat in revenue, a beat in EPS. Um, their margin still went down. And they also announced in their guidance that they'll be opening almost about 250 new restaurants alongside um, a branch off of their Chipotle, which they said is actually doing much better than expected, especially from a digital standpoint, because a lot of those orders are coming in through the app and then the customer just drives through, picks up and goes on their way. Anyway, another thing that stuck out to me regarding Chipotle's guidance and after the earnings call yesterday, we saw that they have about $300, $300 million put to the side for buybacks. So it made me think, you know, how much institutional ownership does Chipotle have to the point where that even if you have a, a loss in margin and your customer satisfaction seems to be down just off of you know basic searches. How are you still able to manage to have these beats? And again, these the beats in revenue and EPS directly came from the price increases that they've been doing, as well as the changes that they've made to the menu. But one thing that you wanna keep in mind is that Chipotle has a 90% institutional ownership. And with the 90% institutional ownership, there's not a lot of shares out to float that's going to change, that's going to move the meter one way or another. So if any of you guys are holding in Chipotle, you guys are probably in a very good place because they have a lot of money put to the side for a buyback. And it doesn't seem like they're going to be changing course at all, but actually they're going to be increasing their restaurants by about 250 over the next year. That's kind of what they're on track to do. And they will put more focus on their Chipotle lanes which to me kind of seems like they're going from fast casual into fast food, but that's, that's for another conversation. But either way, the reason I want to bring that up is we're now hearing that other big tech companies are just big companies that have high institutional ownership are also falling back on buyback options to help make sure that these stocks and the share price of these stocks maintain the same or if not continue to increase over time including Google, McDonald's, Coca-Cola, Chipotle, like we just mentioned, and Facebook. Today, Facebook had a miss on two of those three main components that we just discussed. And today in the after hours, Facebook is up, at the time of this recording, they're up about 14%. So again, just want to bring that to your guys' attention because I think this is something that we should all try to pay attention to because if you're, if you are into, if you are, a shareholder of a company that doesn't have a large institutional ownership, then you definitely want to pay attention to its upcoming guidance, its EPS, its revenue, and probably its margin. But if it, if you're in a company that has a large institutional ownership, then those factors do matter. But what you also might want to also keep in consideration is 
the possibility of a buyback and how that could help shape where the stock goes in the future. Speaking of companies that have lower than 90% of institutional ownership is Desktop Metal. But today they announced that they will be reporting on their earnings for Q1 on May 11th. So on May 11th, I'll definitely be recording a video on how they did and expect that on May 12th or May 13th, depending on where we're at with our schedule for pushing these videos out. But one other thing I want you guys to know, again, for this is just for all my OTC heads out there. If you guys have been watching the channel, you guys know I only have two companies that I follow in the OTC. And my main one that we talk about exclusively would be ABML. But one that we never talk about is OZSC. They're a company that focuses on Neo grids, and we could probably have a whole video on what OZSC does, OZOP. But today, out of the entire portfolio, they were up about 30%, which was actually insane to see. So for all my OZSC people out there, we finally got some word that of an uplist to the OTCQB, and I think this had a big, uh, I think this had a played a big role in in why we saw that price jump. But okay, I know today was a little bit more compact than usual, but like always, thank you so much for checking out Stock Talk with Eric Anthony, and I'll see you mañana.